Just how much has this industry grown? Oh, it's grown by leaps and bounds. I think that, you know, I, I don't know what the last count was, but at least there's at least 20 or 30 companies in the, uh, in the Alberta, BC uh, territories that basically offer heli skiing packages. Some have been around for 15, 20 years. Some are just getting into the business. Uh, and, you know, it is a, it's one that has a lot of interest. It is very expensive to basically take a, to take a heli skiing excursion. Hmm. Uh, and that's attracting more and more companies, more and more heli operators, helicopter operators to get into this business. Uh, so, you know, it may be attracting a little too much attention for new entrants, but I think that uh, there is a, uh, I, I believe that there is a need to, to have a greater oversight in terms of the, uh, the skill sets and the general understanding of what it takes to be a helicopter, a heli skiing pilot and flying in those conditions. And as it stands now, you know, we don't know the cause of the crash, but as it stands now, what kind of oversight is there? Well, right now, you you have to have a license to fly uh, helicopters. It, you know, the Augusta airplane, the Augusta aircraft that was used in this flight, you know, there is a, a licensing requirement uh, for the aircraft operator to be, you know, to be allowed to use that aircraft. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the operator, what the, what the company has in terms of additional training and additional um, requirements for ensuring that their pilots are, are capable of understanding one, the terrain they're going to be flying in, and two, um, the operating conditions associated with flying people under less than ideal flying conditions. So it, there is additional training that is the responsibility of the operator, uh, and that's probably where there might be a need to make sure that we have a consistent set of regulations that covers all the operators associated with heli skiing something that's not there now.